Okay. Greetings to one and all from the NMIMS University Students Council. My name is Himansh Kanwil, a second year student from NMIMS School of Commerce, Mumbai. And I welcome you all to our session today on championing diversity and inclus inclusiveness in the workplace. Today, it is my distinct honor to present to you Mr. Manas Pratimbora, HR Manager for Leadership and Diversity at Tata Consultancy Services. He's an HR specialist who has extensive experience in research analytics, change management, and internal and external branding. He has worked with various eminent names across industries such as British Telecom, Global Capital Market, and Citibank. He is currently spearheading the diversity and inclus inclusion strategy for TCS, and he plays a key role in their decision making. So I thank you for joining us, sir, and it's an honor to have you here with us today. Thank you, Hemang. So I feel it privileged to be here, and thank you for having me, and thanks for the flawless coordination. Well, okay. Thank you so much, sir. So to begin with, uh, let's start off by learning more about your roles as the HR Manager for Leadership and Diversity at Tata Consultancy Services. Okay, great. So the, before talking about my roles and responsibilities, let me just here now give you a quick glimpse of the leadership and diversity function itself. So from a very broad level perspective, if you, if you look at leadership and diversity as a function, it talks about two perspectives. First is leadership in diversity. Second is diversity in leadership. Okay. So personally, the second term, leadership in diversity, I look at it from a different perspective. Okay. So uh, no, most of the organizations will be having a very persistent challenge you know, in the organizations with respect to diversity and inclusion. That is the leaky pipeline. Okay. Uh, meaning, so if you have you know, different segments and different representation of different segments in a workforce, probably at a lower level, it will see more representations. But if you take a bottom to top approach, you see the representation reduces significantly. And probably at the top level, representation of the different segments reduces to a significant amount. Right. Okay. So that is why I think there is a need to emphasize on looking at diversity in leadership itself. That may help in different things. First is bringing different kind of you know, uh, leadership skills to the top level that eventually impacts the decision making at the organization level. So another way of looking at it is, if you have the representation of diverse segments at the top level, it will be very easy for you to get buy-in you know, for any diversity related agenda, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now coming to my roles and responsibilities, Mm -hmm. Actually, I started with uh, no, diversity and inclusion, then it got extended to leadership as well. So mm -hmm. first and foremost, we had to do a lot you know, while creating awareness within the organization, be mm -hmm. it awareness uh, no, about the differences we have, and also you know, awareness about the biases, be it cogn uh, cognitive and incognitive biases we, we may you know, carry with us. Then second thing is there's a need of you know, creating sensitization across the organization, particularly some stakeholders. For example, if we talk about talent acquisition dream, so they may be done of fast interface with the candidates, fast interface with the employees, but mm -hmm. they may have you know, uh, some consistent biases in them, sometimes not uh, no, always, but yeah, we may try to uh, make them aware of the kind of biases that may exist. And also we may uh, no, uh, try to create awareness among themselves, uh, no, whether to how to look at different diversity segments. Mm -hmm. That may probably eventually help the organization to bring and attract diverse talents to the organization. Okay, mm -hmm. this is just an example. And similarly, say, uh, no, if we want to talk about an inclusive work culture, okay, mm -hmm. so definitely one thing you must ensure is the managers must be inclusive. Okay, mm -hmm. to make the managers inclusive, you may have to focus on again, you know, making them aware of all the differences, making them aware of biases and all. Right, mm -hmm. certain interventions need to be taken for the managers as well. Then coming to the next part of it, we'll have n number of enablers to put in terms of diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. If you have to take some interventions, then definitely these uh, no, enablers are going to help you in a different way. For example, the policies. Okay, so right now I think most of the organizations will be having a dedicated diversity and inclusion policies. Even some will extend it to uh, no, disability inclusion. Some must be having say LGBTQ plus inclusion policies, right? Mm -hmm. So those kind of enablers must be there. Then uh, also organizations are uh, focusing on employee resource groups where the communities come together and discuss their issues and find their solutions by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. 
third thing is yeah particularly personally my strength is analytics okay so right. i look at most of the data in the organization yeah. and uh, yeah so definitely in leadership and diversity is uh, one of the uh, no, most responsible area is checking the metrics diversity metrics then finding insights out of them then telling the story out of the out of your data and tell it to the leadership then eventually you, you know it helps to take decisions in the organization mm -hmm. be it policy change right be it process change or be it you know in terms of bringing some of the initiative in the organization mm -hmm. then another area is probably aversion accreditation okay mm -hmm. if you want to present yourself as a diversity friendly employer then okay. definitely you must take take care of awards and accreditation and probably if you win some awards and it comes into public it comes into social media then people will know that you're a diversity friendly employer right then the last but not the least uh, i also take care of some special initiatives okay it's like say uh, no, taking care of a benchmarking study mm -hmm. you have to know where the industry is heading whether no where other organizations are heading definitely your competitors also so right. you have to look at them also and then you, you do your benchmarking and try to understand uh, if you need to do anything extra in your organization, then I can only take the initiatives. Right. Well, that's great to know. And uh, wow, you've actually covered a lot of elements. So like your role actually involves a lot of things. And the best part of it I like is ki how you have, you know, sort of championed both the technical side of it with the analytics and, uh, you know, the data yes. part of things and then the soft skills, which are required for any HR manager is to connect yes. these two things. Correct. And the bottom-up approach, uh, and you know, you've really shifted my perspective from looking at diversity in leadership or leadership in diversity, right? Uh, like for right, diversity, excellent. and uh, I think you made a very valid point there about how it starts from the managers. So, yeah. however, the top management looks at diversity is how it's going to pass down to the entire organization. So, thank you for yeah. those insights. So, uh, moving on, I have another personal related question, which is over the course of your thriving career. You've moved through, you know, a spectrum of sectors from telecom to then banking and now IT consulting services. So uh, how have you seen your role as an HR specialist evolve and how is diversity and inclusion seen in these sectors? Okay. Uh, to be very precise, I think there is no one size fits all approach in diversity and inclusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the reason behind this is, first of all, you have different benchmarks for different industries, right? Mm -hmm. For example, you can't expect the same number of you know, gender representation in a manufacturing industry, while you can think of probably you know, a better percentage in an IT industry, correct? Mm -hmm. So again, you know, challenges the organizations have are probably different. So the problem statement varies from organization to organization, industry to industry. Very quick example can be from if you look at a hospital, okay? Mm -hmm. Then probably it will be having uh, you know, nurses and you know uh, what kind of ratio they are going to have, right? Mm -hmm. So while the other organizations are trying to gain, uh, you know, get more women into the workforce, then probably the hospital is looking at it you know, in the reverse direction, right? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, yeah. So uh, another thing I wanted to just tell you is sometimes what we do is we just look at the best practices of one organization or one industry and we try to incorporate in ours, right? But sometimes the best practices cannot be the best practices for the other organization. Sometimes even it may you know, become the worst practice even, right? That may happen. And uh, yeah, another uh, thing coming into my mind is uh, sometimes it depends on the presence of the organization in different countries or different geographies. Okay. So right. the, yeah. So uh, you have to follow the law of the land. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if probably uh, no, US is saying that you have to submit the numbers of your ethnic background you know, mm -hmm. uh, to the government. They have a regulation saying that, okay, then you have okay. to do it, you have to follow it. Definitely, right. uh, no, by default, your ethnicity as a diversity segment gets you no know, focus there. Correct. In India, if you are talking about, say, right to people with disability act, okay, if the mm -hmm. government is saying that you have to maintain a register for mm -hmm. all those people with disability, definitely they have to uh, no, uh, voluntarily disclose themselves as disability, you can't force them. But mm -hmm. you have to collect those data and you have to focus on the people with disability segment as well. So those things come automatically. Right. Similar examples can be probably say if you talk about maternity leave. In India, it's you know, six months maternity leave is mandated here. In right. Germany, it will be one year, right? Mm -hmm. So you may have to look at your diversity agenda in a different way. So why mm -hmm. I'm saying this is say if someone is uh, you know, going for a long leave, it can be parental leave, it can be for higher studies, etc. When this person comes back to your organization, they need certain kind of reintegration, right? 
So mm-hmm. by that time, when you come back, probably lots of policies got changed. If any organization stuck, some might get changed. And mm-hmm. this person might get it very difficult to you know, explore your organization uh, when this person comes back, right? Mm-hmm. We have the certain uh, interventions in your organizations that makes this person comfortable to uh, you know, come back and just enjoy his work life, right? right? Even sometimes it may need reskilling and it may need a mentor as well. Mm-hmm. That's true. Right? Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for sharing those. And I've realized uh, your examples actually have, you know, really aided my understanding. Uh, you know, like my first thought comes ki, like, why not? Why is it not the same everywhere? But your example of hospitals and then manufacturing, right. they really right. brought a lot of clarity into, you know, how diversity and inclusion can vary, but how right. it's important, like, you know, important, uh, not just yeah. in the base of gender, but other metrics right. as well. Right. Right. So talking about the importance part, I think importance is there everywhere. Okay. I was just yeah. explaining about the role yeah. part, how it plays yeah. a different role in different industry or different organization. Mm-hmm. I think importance is same everywhere in the sense that, say, mm-hmm. uh, no, if you have a diverse set of customers, you must be having right. a diverse set of workforce as well to cater to their needs, right? That's that is one thing. Then if we are looking at innovation, and right now I think innovation as a uh, no, competency of the organization is very much important. Right. Even the environments right. change frequently, right? Yeah. And you have to adapt yourself to those changes. Absolutely. And if you are not innovative enough, it's very difficult to survive. Correct? Right. So if you are looking at innovation, then diversity is a must. Perfect. That's actually very true. And diversity, the one very big plus of that when you're talking about innovation is how you can, you know, get ideas right. from various talent pools. Because, exactly. Exactly. Right. So that's a very right point. Right. Very rightly said there. So now moving on to the third one, where uh, I wanted to understand why, like, what are the benefits? So like I just mentioned mm. one, which was, you know, draw, uh, you know, talent from various groups of people. What are some other benefits of incorporating diversity in your workforce? Oh, of course, there are many. Mm-hmm. So first of all, if you uh, you know, go through a Deloitte study, it was done, in, uh, I think, uh, two, three years back. Okay. It talks about several factors in quantitative terms. Okay. First of all, okay. I just see my if I can refer to my notes. <laughs> so yeah, first of all, it talks about uh, no organization with inclusive cultures are twice as likely to meet or uh, exceed their financial targets. Right. First thing. Second thing is they are talking about their twice x more likely to be high performing. Right. Third is six x more likely to be innovative and agile. Mm-hmm. Okay. 8x more, more directly to achieve better business results. So wow. you can see the business outcome directly related to this, directly related to diversity and inclusion. So right. if you look at other studies from probably McKinsey and other organizations, you will see that they are also talking about, say, um, you know, if you have enough diversity or enough inclusiveness in leadership, mm-hmm. so it, there is a chance that probably 20% of your decision-making quality will be improving. Okay. Mm-hmm. They, it also talks about 29% better collaboration. Okay, then 19% uh, no, uh, likeliness to retain employees. Those things are there. But while talking about these facts and figures, I also wanted to bring some other aspects, some examples, you know, what I probably have come across. Right. So fa- first of all, as I said, that diverse, uh, no, if you have a diverse set of customers, you must be having a diverse set of employees. So let right. me give you some examples to just you know, uh, bring some light into this uh, particular mm-hmm. statement. Uh, okay. okay, first of all, <laughs> Say, if I am developing some product for people with disabilities, probably the, for the visually impaired people, okay. So if I am selling it to the market and uh, visually impaired people are also using this probably software, just example, maybe Zor software or something, with the help of that, these people can actually read content from a website, read their mails, etc. Mm-hmm. But while developing this particular product, if you do not have any visually impaired people in your organization, how will you test this product? Correct. Right. You have to test this product thoroughly, then you can release into the market, right? Otherwise, mm-hmm. you don't know how this, how the users are going to accept it. Correct. Yeah. That is one example. Similar example can be. Uh, I think this actually happened. This is a uh, no, uh, event that I knew, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So one company, they produced a soap dispenser. Okay. So that was uh, taking the market in their in the particular country. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so they thought of just expanding their market and they just thought of exploring other countries as well. Right. And then they suddenly found that lots of you know, customer feedbacks are coming that this particular product is not actually working. Yeah. Okay. Think about the other flaws, it's not actually serving the purpose. Okay. Right. Then they try to understand why this is happening. Right. Then they found that 
this particular organization had all the workforces which are white, right. white ethnicity, basically. Okay. There was no, no black person in the organization. Oh. So every employee in the organization tested this product before launching. Right. And how this product was working is, so if you put your hands just below the dispenser, so a certain rays of light are reflected from there. So the dispenser yeah. understands that something is there. So I have to dispense soap. Right. Okay. It's happening in that way. So mm -hmm. when the person is black, then basically there was no light being reflected from there. So he did not right. even understand how it was happening. Right. Similarly, some other companies, uh, one company has tried to sell their say products related to babies and uh, probably they tried to invade uh, South Africa and right. they found that their products are not getting sold. Okay. Right. And the reason they found is the posters, uh, no, what are being used on the uh, packets. So right. These are babies which are white and they are not able to relate to these babies you know, in South Africa. Okay. Right. Uh, then probably they had to change everything, the packaging and everything. They had to look at it, review it, and uh, no, then again relaunch the product. Then it was taking the market. Wow. Okay. So lots of lots of similar examples are there, and uh, no, you may think of uh, some even lawsuits. Uh, no, um, <laughs> in, uh, yeah, I think Facebook faced it. It's public also. It's being published everywhere. So okay. while they while they launch this face recognition mechanism, right? They can just right. recognize your face and say that this is Hemangs or this is Manas, right? right? Initially, what happens is some black people actually they were tagged as gorilla. Oh we just think God. of the repercussions, right? That is the lawsuit, lawsuit was filed and probably no heavy penalty was being paid by Facebook. Correct. That is absolutely disastrous. If you know any organization were to face that, <laughs> but yeah. you know, like so, that's how organizations learn their lesson. Uh, right. <laughs> so now the impact of diversity, I think, a little bit clear. And okay. apart from that, definitely you have lots of other things. No, as I said, business impact is there. It has mm -hmm. impact on innovation. It has impact on retention. Your employee satisfaction index, employee engagement index, and employee belongingness score. Lots of other impacts are there. Wow. Well, that has really, you know, expanded the depth of my understanding for this thing, and you know how important and how essential diversity right. is you know usually we overlook we have been overlooking right. diversity for quite some time and now in the recent times you know right. uh, with social media and you know in, increasing conversations around this issue right. you know people have slowly right. started to appreciate this more and you know right. in, in fact i even uh, you know came across the facebook example and uh, this one uh, the other one that you just mentioned with the you know the water dispenser the soap dispenser mm. and uh, how it right. wasn't recognizing the black hands and everything so right. those two things, you know, I, I learned about them from social media as well. So this is again right. another example of how, you know, these conversations are catching a lot of uh, attention. Correct. there. So thank right. you for sharing those. And um, so moving on. So now that we have realized how important diversity and inclusiveness is and how it's important for, you know, to not just remain competitive in the market, but also abide and comply with all the regulations. What are some initiatives that you have implemented in your experience to promote diversity and inclusion within your organization? Okay, actually there are a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. so first and foremost to clarify, uh, no, uh, basically your initiatives are aligned with your diversity vision. Okay. okay, so if your organization is having a vision, like even you'll openly see some of the organizations will be saying that I need to be fifty percent, uh, no, you need to have fifty percent, uh, no, women in the workforce by say two thousand twenty-five. Okay. Definitely, they must be having some initiatives that no help to bring more women to the organizations. Okay, mm -hmm. we have also uh, no initiatives uh, uh, which are focused on gender. Mm -hmm. One is probably uh, no focusing on um, leadership development. Uh, uh, leadership development so that uh, more women can bring can be brought to the leadership level okay right that is there but while uh, talking about the initiatives we just wanted to take a systematic approach systematic approach in the sense that if we have some interventions at senior level that cannot be the same for middle or lower level right mm -hmm. taking the same example of you know uh, developmental intervention where we are helping women to move into the leadership roles so we have certain interventions there for seniors that cannot be the same for the middle. That has to be customized a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And if you talk about the junior pool, it's even more customized, right? right. For junior pool, you can't think of you know, move, immediately moving, you know, moving them to leadership roles. Probably right. at that right. level, you have to think of building their aspirations. And how you can build aspirations is one way of that maybe probably bringing more you know, role models in front of them. Okay. 
Okay. Sometimes they might think that in my organizations, there are no women in sales role. So I can't even think of a sales career in the organization. But if you pinpoint and if you find out some woman who is actually playing a sales role and she is doing the best, just bring her in front of these people and showcase that this is the person who is actually taking a sales career and she is performing very well. And probably sharing the stories and learning from that person may help a little bit. Correct. Okay. And similarly, so another way of looking at the interventions are one is say segment wise, one is gender. Similarly, for people with disabilities, definitely you may have to have different interventions. You may have to look at accessibility. So if you are preparing a website and it can't be, even be accessed by visually impaired people, then how it can be accessible, right? You Correct. have to ensure that it can be accessed by everyone. Correct. And for say LGBTQ plus people, there are very recent examples and very changes in policies, we, recent, recent changes in policies we have. So one is, uh, you know, say a uh, health insurance, insurance related uh, scheme we had for spouse and children along with the employee, right? Okay. Definitely if you talk about spouse, you cannot cover LGBTQ plus segment. So we had to change the term itself. We change it to partner so that the even employee, LGBTQ plus employees can declare their partners if they want and they can get benefited, okay? Even the partners can also be covered under health insurance scheme. And right now for international travel also, so earlier only the uh, no, employee and his or uh, her spouse can uh, no, they mm. took those kind of opportunities. Right, right now, since we are using this term partner and now we are opening it to partners as well, even the LGBTQ plus people can bring their partners while they are traveling uh, no, across different countries. Right. So those kind of changes are happening even now, health insurance schemes are paying, uh, no, I mean, financial aid for even uh, gender reassignment surgery, sexual reassignment surgery, what we call it, mm -hmm. SRS, I think it's okay. called. Okay. okay. So these changes are there. Then also we have, uh, no, have not restricted our interventions within the organization itself. We are allying with our, allying with our clients as well. Okay. We have something okay. called client as uh, allies. Okay. And mm -hmm. there, what we do is we just collaborate with our clients. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, no, we just share our best practices. We invite employees from both the organizations to be a part of it and get benefited out of those conversations. Wow. Oh. Well, that's lovely. I think uh, that's a very, uh, you know, great way to make changes beyond your organization as well. And, yeah. you know, learn from different organizations by partnering with them and treating them as allies. Correct. You can learn more and you can, you know, uh, implement more inclusive strategies. You're not just internally inclusive, you're also externally inclusive is what I'm starting to see. That right. You just uh, learn from your partners as well. So, right. and it's great to see that it's a very encouraging sign of how organizations are, you know, transforming their policy mm -hmm. uh, as they move into the future. Got so, um, one other question that, you know, comes in my mind is key, uh, when you're looking at so many organizations, uh, you know, benchmarking being one of your specialties as well. So what are some ways in which you gauge how inclusive your company is? So if we talk about an inclusive culture or probably inclusion itself, you know, it looks like we are trying to measure something intangible, right? right. But if we correctly remember one of, one of the quote from one of the American psychologists, I think Thorn died. He okay. said that yeah. I'm just telling you the excerpt, not in exact words. Yeah. He said that if something exists, that exists in some quantities. And if something exists in some quantities, that can be measured. That's why I'm saying that, yeah, definitely yeah. inclusion can be measured. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so sometimes we look at different, different diversity parameters, different inclusion parameters as well. And at some point of time, probably you may think that uh, this is not a parameter we can talk about inclusiveness. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you think deeply and try to analyze, you'll see a relationship inclusion. Right. Okay. So all those parameters definitely we we'll look at. And why I'm saying that the sometimes diversity parameters are also able to talk about inclusion. One example can be if you track simply your gender metrics, say a person is a woman, whether it's increasing or decreasing in your organization. If you see an increase in person as a woman in the organization, probably somewhere it's talking about gender inclusiveness. You must be doing something to retain, you know, retain women in your organization. You must be trying to you know, attract those people uh, to towards your organization so that enough women are, get, are getting hired in the organization. Somewhere you are trying to make a balance and you know, even you are getting more profits, mm -hmm. right? You're getting more women in the organizations. Right. So yeah, 
That's why I'm saying that sometimes the diversity parameters are also able to talk about inclusion. Apart from that, we also have say, you know, annual surveys, pulse surveys, as you know, every organization talks about. Mm -hmm. So some of the some of the items within those instruments will be there, which directly talks about inclusion. Mm -hmm. One can be probably sense of belongingness, right? Whether okay. be, whether okay. the belongingness score is improving or not. That can tell you about how inclusion is, you know, I mean, uh, working in your organization or not. Second thing can be a little bit, uh, not indirect probably, satisfaction index and your employee engagement index. You can't directly say that employees are getting engaged only because, you know, of your diversity and inclusion related interventions. There may be something else also, but definitely this can be also a, you know, uh, part of those factors. Right. And lastly, I just wanted to bring another aspect of it, say, I, I'm referring to the same the, the latest study, okay, okay, where it's talking about the different levels of inclusion, okay. okay. First and foremost, it's talking about fairness and respect. So if you think that your organization policies are fair, okay, if you're feeling that I am respected in the organization, definitely you will feel that no, I'm included, I belong to this organization. Second level is, is talking about uh, whether I am valued in the organization and whether I have a sense of belongingness. Okay, right. definitely belongingness is being scored even within Pulse service right now. Right. And third thing is uh, safe and open. Where do you feel in organization that I am safe? Okay, mm -hmm. and my organization is open to everything. Right. Very, very quick example, but really interesting. Okay, okay. So, so in an organization, if you have a town hall, probably you are conducting it through Microsoft Teams or probably Webex. So you have two options. Okay, so while asking questions to your leadership or the panelist, whoever it is, you have one option to reveal your name and then ask the question. So you have another option, you just anonymize yourself, then ask the question, okay? Mm -hmm. So while in the town hall, you observe that probably lots of questions have been asked, but 70% of them are actually anonymous. Okay. What does it, what does it mean, right? Right. Probably there's a psychological game. So probably employees are not feeling safe to say that my organization has no, some negative aspects and they don't want to reveal themselves while saying so. Correct. Correct. The fear of being they may, they, yeah. Right. They might yeah. be, they might be, you know, having some fear in mind that if I say something negative about my organizations, probably you no, know, my, my supervisor will not like, my leaders will not like, and I may have some negative repercussions. Okay. Yeah. So the last stage is it's about empowering and growing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are empowered to do, do something in your organization, so basically, you know, you must feel shameless and fearless while doing something, while approaching anyone in the organization. Mm -hmm. So if a trainee can approach your vice president or senior vice president in the organization without any fear, without any shame, then the organization is going to be, you know, termed as inclusive. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for bringing those to light. And, uh, you know, I think you shared a lot of, uh, you know, profound ideas here. The one thing that I really is going to stick with me is the quote that you mentioned in the beginning, if anything exists and how it, it can be measured. And right. I think that is a very eye-opening statement there because... Usually, like even I, when I was, you know, researching diversity and inclusiveness before the interview and, you know, learning more about the subject, I thought like it's it's going to be very tricky for HR managers to quantify something that is so abstract. Right. Right. So that is definitely a challenge, but it's great to see how you look at it so differently and it actually makes a lot of sense to me now. So thank you for sharing those. And uh, there were a couple of clarifications coming to these. So like we've spoken about how, you know, we incorporate gender. Mm -hmm. So what are some mm -hmm. other parameters on the basis of which you, you know, incorporate diversity, socioeconomic backgrounds, I'll say another one. So gender, what are some other ways in which you incorporate it? Oh, there are n number of parameters. So uh, mm -hmm. no, one is you look at, even if you look at gender, probably you have to look at, uh, no, uh, at n number of interfaces. Okay. For example, okay. hiring is one. Okay. okay, what percentage of gender you are hiring, then mm -hmm. definitely, you know, you may have to look at, say, engagement score, particularly for men, then you may have to look at retention of women separately, everything. If you talk about other diversity parameters, then definitely it will come, you know, uh, also it should encompass other segments like people with disabilities, okay, so uh, then say LGBTQ+, plus, etc. Mm -hmm. And so even if, you know, you are, when, whenever you are having some awareness sessions, sensitization ses sessions, Mm -hmm. We'll get a clear mm -hmm. idea. So, what is the percentage of people they are joining this you know, kind of conversations? Are they interested in this? We are doing n number of things, but ultimately, you are, even though no one is attending this, mm -hmm. that means no, you are not able to you know, serve your agenda. Correct? You may have to track those numbers as well. What right. percentage of people are actually interested you know, to be a part of this? Mm -hmm. 
even say uh, no if as i spoke about client as allies of diversity okay so how many clients are interested to you know be a part of your organizational agenda that's also another way of looking at it similarly say people who are coming from you know long back okay so how much they time take how much time they take to get into a project in the organization okay and after coming back how long they stay with the organization okay those kind of aspects also you may have to look at right similarly say promotion is another thing okay so if you are you know, if people are getting promoted to one, from one level to another say from junior to middle then mm. middle to senior then what is the percentage of women there what is the percentage of people with disability there so are right. they getting promoted right right and those competitive studies will give you you know lots of insights i guess right yeah yeah i agree i agree well thank you for sharing those i think uh, there's various things to look at and you yeah. know i think a uh, holistic way to look at it is the only way you know you can get your organization to be truly diverse not just gender but you look at various other metrics uh, to you know make your right. organization right. inclusive as a whole correct yeah. another thing is probably when whatever the interventions you take is very important to uh, the gauge effectiveness of those initiatives okay so mm-hmm. if i am uh, talking about the program which is you know trying to bring women to the leadership levels mm-hmm. then how many of those participants have actually you uh, know climbed up to those levels that you have to look at okay right. similarly is there any difference between men and women men are definitely not participating uh, no in an intervention which is specific to women but is there are there any differences are mm-hmm. men also progressing uh, to to those those levels at the same rate without having any intervention right, right? those things you may have to look at so you need to have some cohort studies some competitive studies then only it will make sense well yeah and i think uh, well thank you for that i think i agree with what you've just said and uh, you know you know surveying them and seeing the progress and the various ways you look at it like without the intervention yeah. what's the progress of ma- males where where yeah. compared to you know females with interventions i think such comparative studies are required to you know really gauge the performance and so i've got yeah. more clarity on the subject so thank you for that Oh uh, another question of mine is how is technology which has been increasingly being adopted in the recent mm-hmm. times not just because of the pandemic but also because how uh, you know organizations are realizing the benefits of it so how is uh, tech being leveraged within hr to you know enhance talent assessment for diversity and inclusion okay see technology has a very big role to play in each and every hr areas right now right okay and definitely in diversity and inclusion as well mm-hmm. so first and foremost i think it's about the speed second thing is accuracy so mm-hmm. the third thing is probably it's accessibility mm-hmm. and the fourth thing is probably you know little bit of creating impression okay mm-hmm. let me explain this one by one while i'm talking about speed is we just think of an interview okay yeah. probably you uh, know i am just uh, connecting with someone and maybe having a face to face conversation and i am trying to judge whether this person is confident or not Yeah. whether this person is having uh, no an effective communication strategies or not okay mm-hmm. but what if this person just shares a video or answering some questions and i try i just use some machine learning to analyze whether this person is confident or not whether this person is you no know, having enough communication skill or not okay. that can that can be done right so initially it will be a little bit challenging in the sense that you may have to understand that this you no know, machine learning approach is working perfectly probably initially you do a set of analysis you uh, know uh, a set of analysis manually compare mm-hmm. with the results of the machine intervention then you try to understand whether it is correct working per- perfectly or not right mm-hmm. then another thing from diversity and inclusion perspective is probably you can get rid of some biases if you use technologies mm-hmm. so there is one study where say one resume was shared with the uh, evaluators and uh, for a sales position and you just used a female name okay so that was analyzed and particularly finally this person got rejected okay and the same resume was shared with the you know, evaluators with a male name and that person got selected wow now you understand the biases yeah, yeah that's a bias that's clear bias right <laughs> so now technology has a lot to do with this kind of things so one is if technology can uh, you know eliminate all those interfaces where biases are expected probably omitting all the genders omitting names you just have a resume you don't know whether it is male or female you don't know from where which college this resume is coming from okay mm-hmm. don't probably it will make more sense then another thing is if the technology can do the evaluation itself uh, without having any manual interventions probably it will eliminate lots of man- no manual biases 
-hmm. Correct. And uh, I also spoke about uh, this thing, accessibility, and mm -hmm. say, uh, yeah. So I was talking about this because uh, say earlier how it happened to, for a performance appraisal process, right? You have to log into a system, then you log into a particular employee portal, and then you just do your self evaluation. Then your appraiser will review it, right? Then your reviewer will review. Finally, it gets submitted. Now it has more of a uh, no, it has just converted to a different process. It's becoming more and more a continuous feedback kind of mechanism. Okay, mm -hmm. right now, says so you have an app, you can install on your mobile. So when you leave office, probably while traveling, you can just enter your comments there that these are the achievements I have made. So and so your supervisors can review and provide his or her comments as well. So in that way, it can run for the entire year. Okay. So right. it will eliminate lots of things like recency effects. So what happens is probably at the end of the year, I have done lots of things. So the, so my supervisor thinks that, oh, this person has done so and so things. But the initial nine months, actually, I did not do anything. Mm -hmm. Continuous feedback will ensure that we're doing, you know, uh, throughout the year. And uh, no, so there, that's why the recency bias is not going to play any part in that, right? right. So it's a, basically, it's an anytime, anywhere kind of mechanism mm -hmm. that's coming up. Wow, right. Well, that's technology is certainly making long strides within this HR yeah. uh, process automation. And uh, yeah. you, like you mentioned, this uh, if technology can be you know adopted in places where there yeah. are such biases, you know it, it can actually accelerate how quickly you know diversity and inclusion is implemented right. within the organization. And that's uh, it goes to show you know how important technology is overall, and it can be implemented in various areas. Like usually it's right. tricky yeah. for, you know, a department as subjective or, you know, as that deals with a lot of abstract problems. If it was operations or sales or marketing technology can, you know, you can actually see how it can be applied on the first glance itself. But with right. HR, you know, you deal with people and dealing with people is something that's very tricky. So right. to see technology being adopted there is very encouraging. And, uh, right. you know, it's, uh, it's fascinating to see, you know, how, you know, capable. Right then. Well, so another awesome. example I wanted to give is say uh -huh. if you are joining an organization, okay, if right. you're a new joiner, so you have to be aware of lots of organization policies, okay. So right. I give you an employer handbook, probably consisting of 100 or 200 pages, okay. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I just share you some links you know, of the policies of the organization so that you have to go through it. Right. Again, another 100 or 200 pages. So right. what if I just you know, use the technique, techniques of gamification, I just make it an app and give it to you. You just play the game and at the end of the you know, game, you just become aware of all the policies. That's right. Very, it gives you a different impression altogether. Right. Gamification of these policies and learning is actually going to aid their understanding. It's going to make the process a lot less tedious. And you know, that right. can actually, like you, you know, previously mentioned, uh, how can you get, you know, employees excited and interested about these things? Right. It is with these policies and, you know, these uh, uh, sort of uh, provisions in terms of app gamification of uh, policies, it's uh, it can actually you know go a long way in helping them learn faster. So well, that's a very interesting development that you've just shared. So now, as we approach the culmination of today's session, uh, what are some words of advice that you would like to give to the budding corporates amongst the undergrad and postgraduate audience that's going to be viewing this video? It's very short and simple. I just you know, I mean, just keep an open mind. First of all, mm -hmm. so why I'm saying this is so once you, you know come into an organization, probably there are, there are n number of negative things. You'll see n number of negative negative things around you. Maybe sometimes, probably you will interact with people who are very difficult to deal with. Okay, mm -hmm. but try to uh, accept every challenge as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. okay. That is what is going to help you. Okay. Right. Then uh, second thing is you need to have a positive psychology. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you look at anything and everything, you will always have two aspects of it. One is always positive, one is always negative. So mm -hmm. what you look, look at is de it depends on you, mm -hmm. right? It's very old example of you know, the glass of water, whether it is half filled or whether it is half empty. So how it looks at it, that depends, that matters. Right. In the optimistic and pessimistic approach to viewing things. Well, that was exactly. very briefly put and that was you know very profound in its own right. Uh, you know, that, that is how this one simple uh, way of viewing things can, you know, actually help our students in a lot of ways. And like, as we prepare for our, you know, initial forays into the professional world, I think uh, it is the small, the fundamentals that, you know, we really have to work upon. 
and then everything else will just fall into place so thank you yes. for sharing that advice sir and um, overall and you know as we now that we've come to the end of this interview uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on diversity and inclusiveness and how it's being implemented in workplaces of today's times and uh, you know there's so many things that i'm going to be taking away from this conversation and you know it's really going to you know and i'm sure i speak on behalf of all of the other students who are going to be watching this interview that uh, there's so much to learn from these hr managers and diversity and inclusiveness needs to be talked about more and as well as learned about more so that uh, we can you know fast forward with the process and uh, you know really have organizations that uh, are equi uh, that are, have equitable workforces so thank you so much for sharing your insights today sir and it was lovely having this conversation with you i wish you the best yeah thank you hemang and my best wishes to the all the upcoming leaders and definitely i have my open heart and open mind thank you so much thank you so much sir